Hi, this section is on how hard drives are connected within our system. This picture shows how we used to connect hard drives, that being the PCIe up top, or I mean, sorry, the um, IDE cable up top that we don't use anymore. You'd be hard pressed to find that. That one used to connect two drives uh, per cable. The what we use now, obviously, is the SATA connection that you've used multiple times. That IDE connection is in our test machines. Uh, you have touched them and taken them out probably in the test machine, um, maybe even connecting up your, the uh, CD-ROM drive in that machine. But the SATA drive is really, or the SATA connector is really how we hook up hard drives today. Uh, the power connections are on the old drives or the Molex power connectors. Now we have just the PCIe power connector and the, and the um, SATA uh, connector right there on physically hooking up our drives. As far as the motherboard itself, it can have any number. Usually they're in pairs and they can either be pointing to the side like this one shows, uh, perpendicular to the motherboard, um, or uh, straight up and down that you plug straight up, up into. And you can see it, that one says SATA 3, SATA 4. These are numbered connection. There's a SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, SATA 4. And by default, you should hook them up in that order. The SATA 1 should be uh, either your CD-ROM or your DVD, or if you don't have any of those, your first primary hard drive. Two should be the next one. That's where they're going to identify them by default. You can go into BIOS and change that order, uh, but that's kind of the native. And here at National Trail, when we image with uh, FOG, it will image the lowest number drive that's connected. So it doesn't matter which drive you have where, it's going to wipe SATA 1. Uh, so make sure SATA 1 is the OS drive when you're using FOG, and that goes for every uh, PC that we have in the district. Laptops doesn't really matter. So that's the physical SATA connection. Um, the connections for both a traditional hard drive and a solid state drive for SATAs are exactly the same. Uh, and we've done that multiple times in class by this point, unplugging and plugging those in. I will tell you that's a big gotcha for students. For some reason, many times uh, when people hook up their hard drives, they forget to hook up the power or the data. They'll physically screw it in, but not ever check to make sure it's physically connected. Uh, so whenever we connect up a hard drive, we make sure both those physical connections are there, and we check in BIOS on the first boot to make sure it shows up uh, in our BIOS settings. The next kind, the fastest kind, the newest kind of hard drive connection is that M.2 connection, which I have circled uh, right here. There's two M.2s on this motherboard right here and right here, and uh, it screws in, depending on the size of the M.2 drive, to any one of these, but generally that's the longest one, the furthest one away is where the M.2 drive screws in. It's got a little tiny itsy bitsy screw that just holds it in place. Uh, M.2 drives are far faster, as we've already talked about, than traditional solid states, and for uh, really an increased performance of five to six times over a solid state, which is then five times over a traditional hard drive, M.2s are a great choice for keeping your operating system and your programs on. M.2s have that little notch in them. If they're a, if they're a PCI M.2, they've got that notch on the right side as you're looking at it. And we're gonna look at a couple different ones. There's different M.2s available. This, again, is an M.2 drive, and that's that little screw holding down the NVMe SSD uh, on this particular motherboard. When we look at those, this is what I'm talking about. Um, not all M.2s are PCI or NVMe. Uh, the NVMe has to have just an M key in order for you to physically look at it and see that it's different. In other words, when you look at the motherboard, there only should be that notch on the right if it's got a notch on the left, which I know this looks like the right, but if I was looking down overhead at the motherboard, it would be on the left. Uh, if it's got one on the left, it is a SATA SSD. So you can see both these have ones on the left. This one also has one on the right. This one only has ones on the left, as I'm looking at it here. Um, so these are physically different. These will not fit in these slots. And these, a SATA SSD on an M.2 is just a SATA SSD. It's still on the SATA channel. The data still goes through there. It may actually disable some of your SATA ports 
you have to read your motherboard manual for that. I've had that happen before where I plugged in a SATA M.2 and then all of a sudden the other SATA didn't work. Uh, that does not happen with PCI NVMEs because they're on a totally different channel and you can't disable SATA to make PCI work because they have nothing to do with them in general. So those are the two different kinds of connectors. Make sure you're using a PCI one and that's what's going to give you that faster performance. Also, if your motherboard doesn't take one, you can use a PCI Express card that can mount one in. This is a PCI X1, and it, because it's an X1, only takes one uh, PC or M.2 card will fit in it. This one's a bigger X16, and it will fit four cards in it. So it depends on what slots you have available and how many M.2 drives you need. But if your motherboard doesn't take it, you can still get it. It just uh, means you might need to put an expansion card in to get an M.2 in your computer. Speeds are astronomically different on the right side, or I'm sorry, on the read side with an NVMe drive. You can see, and these are maximum, maximum read of a traditional hard drive, 150 megabits per second. A SATA, tradition, uh, SATA um, solid state, this should say SS, SATA SSD, is 550 megabits per second. Um, sorry, megabytes per second, and then NVMEs. This chart says 2,500, but you just saw one we just looked at. It said 3,000, so the chart is a little bit dated. They've gotten a little bit faster than when this chart was made. And then you can see the write speeds are always lower, but not much. Look, this, this one's about the same. And by the way, 600 megabytes per second is the most a SATA cable can transfer. So even if this one did faster, it would be capped then at the cable speed of 600, which is why NVMe and PCIe drives were invented, so that we get this hugely faster performance of roughly five times over a traditional SATA cable. And even though this cable does 600, the drive itself only, only can read at 150 megabytes per second. Whenever we make a change, whenever we install a hard drive and set it up, we need to go into BIOS and make sure we see it. Now, this is an old uh, BIOS, and I can't show you all the BIOS screens that are available there, but we need to make sure that we go into BIOS and look under the hard drive section for that hard drive we just installed. Anytime we're having hard drive problems, the BIOS is the first place we should look. Does BIOS even see it? In fact, my son's D drive just failed this weekend. And when I went into BIOS, it wasn't there and that drive's probably gone. Um, so we wanna make sure that we go in there and connect it. There are different ways to control it. On the SATA level, um, there are some different things we can set. AHCI is one of the ways and that's what we use here at National Trail. IDE were those older drives and that's a way for the motherboard to talk to SATA, but AHCI is a lot faster. We're gonna watch a video on why and how AHCI is faster in just a little bit as well. And you can see here's one where the SATA controller is in IDE mode, AHCI is faster. Now here's the thing, you can't just switch between one and the other. If you go home and your motherboard, you boot to BIOS and it's set to IDE, if you switch it to AHCI, uh, you'll blue screen. It won't work. So you have to make a change in the registry before that will work, which you can Google how to do that. But in general, you want to make that change before you format and install an operating system uh, in BIOS. So you want to make sure that's set up in BIOS before you install your OS. And here's that video on uh, AHCI and all about AHCI. So you finally decided to address a huge bottleneck in your computer by upgrading to an SSD for your boot drive. But when you finally get up and running, something seems a little off. Maybe your file transfers are slower than you expected. Underwhelming SSD performance could be caused by a somewhat obscure setting in your UEFI BIOS. You see, most modern hard drives or SSDs can be set to operate in either IDE mode or AHCI mode. But what in the heck does that mean? Well, there are multiple ways your system has of talking to drives. IDE, or Parallel ATA, is the standard that was used for a long time, back when we were all using those 
huge gray ribbon cables to connect hard drives to motherboards. Drives with the newer, smaller SATA, or serial ATA connectors, that most of us use today can also utilize a newer standard called Advanced Host Controller Interface, or AHCI. AHCI enables cool features like hot swapping, so you don't have to turn off your computer if you want to unplug an external drive from an eSATA port or use that super neato hot swap bay in the top of your case. A less obvious but also important advantage is support for native command queuing, which affects the way that your drives handle multiple requests to fetch data at one time. On hard drives, using NCQ can mean the drive's read and write head doesn't have to move around as much to get a certain piece of information, speeding up your access times. But how does AHCI also help speed up SSDs? Well, although the benefits of NCQ on SSDs are small or negligible for home users, many users do report greatly increased performance, especially for large file transfers in AHCI mode compared to IDE mode, due to AHCI just plain being designed with more modern drives in mind. So then, why would you ever want to use IDE mode? Can we just get rid of that option? Well, if you're running an older operating system, such as Windows XP or earlier, there's a good chance that it won't have native AHCI support, meaning it won't play nicely with your drives if your motherboard is set to AHCI mode unless you do some software trickery when you install the OS. This might also be the case if you're trying to run software from a bootable USB stick or an optical disk. And if you have a boot drive that you've been using in IDE mode, but then switch over to AHCI, you might get a boot error, forcing you to switch back to IDE. Though fortunately, if you're using Windows, there's a registry tweak that you can use to fix this more permanently. If you're interested, we've linked instructions in the video description below. Okay, so that's it for the hard drive section and really setting up. The last thing I wanted to say is where we use our hard drives is important. Uh, solid states give us speed, which means that we want to put those anywhere we've got our operating system or where loading that program is important. You could put 128 gig solid state in and put many of your programs on the other drive. The more programs you have on the solid state, the faster your system will perform. Hard drives, traditional hard drives on the other side, give us the lowest cost per terabyte. That's where we want to use and save our movies and our music uh, and things because we can save way more. We can get an 8 terabyte drive for pennies on the dollar compared to a solid state. So that's where we use the two. Uh, and, you know, if you have the cost, you can do all solid state, but if you've if you've got the money, but if you don't, then you want to you want to levelize that speed versus cost by having a multi-drive system uh, where we put all those things on solid state that need to be on solid state, and all those things on a traditional hard drive that need to be on a traditional hard drive. In a laptop, you usually only have one, which means in a laptop you need a solid state drive. Well, that's it for this section. Now you can go on to take the quiz and then start the hard drive project.